Have you ever taken a photo of a screen? Then I bet you will find this image relatable. If you haven't, you should try it. Taking a photo of a computer screen creates these beautiful wavy patterns which are sometimes more interesting than the image itself. Yes, this is an optical illusion. In fact, it is called a Moray pattern. In this video, you will learn about Moray patterns, how they form, and a few of their applications. Let us see a visual representation of a simple Moray pattern. Consider these two grids of lines. They probably look similar to you, but in reality, they have different line spacing. We call the line spacing its pitch. When you move one grid over the other, their translation results in an interference pattern due to the slight difference in pitch. The result of wave interference of two patterns with slight misalignments is a moiré pattern. Moiré is derived from the French word for watered fabric. While photographers work on reducing the effects of moiré, there are many useful applications too. For example, it is a technique in visual cryptography which allows visual information to be encrypted in such a way that its decryption does not require a computer. It is also used as a security feature in banknotes to avoid duplicity and forging. When we click an image of a screen, we are essentially working with two square grids, the pixel grids on the camera sensor and that of the screen. The VV patterns in our images are a result of three effects happening simultaneously. The different pitch from the different pixel density of the screen and the camera sensors, the displacement of one grid with respect to another, and the effect of color filters in both the camera and the screen since the filters are themselves grids of RGB colors which when displaced, rotated or have slightly different pitch produce interference. And just like the set of lines creating moiré, repetitive points can also create moiré patterns. We call these repeating features to be periodic in nature. And we at the University of Illinois work with such moiré patterns but at the atomic scale. More specifically, we work with graphene, which is a two-dimensional material consisting of a single layer of carbon atoms. The ball and stick structure shown over here is one hexagonal cell of graphene. The black spheres are the carbon atoms and the sticks represent the bond between those atoms. Extending this structure in two dimension results in graphene shown on the right. You can actually create this material at home using a pencil lead and a scotch tape. It is a very cool experiment indeed. So, when two layers of graphene are placed on one another with slight misalignment, more patterns are created. These patterns affect the properties of the material to great extent. For example, the bilayer becomes a superconductor at an angle of 1.1 degrees with respect to one another. Well, I know this sounds very interesting, but let's leave this beautiful hexagonal atomic scale mori and move to macro scale mori and create some interesting images from two very normal looking grids. For example, what do you think will happen when we move these printed grids onto one another? The first grid is a simple continuous pattern of vertical lines, while the second grid actually contains information stored along these lines. And when we move one upon another, we can actually see an image of a girl rise from the superimposition. Since this video is being viewed by you on your screen of a specific resolution, the three overlaid grids can also result in an additional mori. To reduce the effect of your screen, we recommend watching this on a large screen. If you don't see a moiré and would like to, you can actually try resizing the screen. What do you think will happen when we move the square grid on top of the horizontal line grid? Well, that is Superman logo. And if I rotate it by 90 degrees, that's Batman. Crazy, right? With our simple code in Google Collaboratory, you can also generate such pretty images and even ones with secret messages. But before we show you how to run the code, let us first understand some basic math that is used to encrypt information into these grids. We hope you have fun creating moiré patterns while you understand how they are generated on the backend. Since the lines have constant spacing and are repeated, we can describe them mathematically as the peaks and valley of a sine wave. We can imagine that the peaks are black and the valleys are white. And the image itself is a stack of waves in the y direction seen from the top. Next is understanding what is a Fourier transform. Starting in one dimension, we have a sine wave shown in the spatial domain where your x-axis is the spatial distance in millimeter and y-axis is amplitude. We can write the same function in the frequency domain as a straight line at one wave per millimeter. This transformation from spatial domain to frequency domain is known as Fourier transform. You can also do this to two-dimensional images. The vertical and skewed line grids can be represented in the Fourier space as functions f and g of u of v. 
The fundamental Moray theorem states that the superimposition of these patterns is their multiplication in spatial domain, which is equivalent to their convolution in frequency domain. But what is convolution? Consider two functions in the xy domain represented by the blue and red curves. Convolution is basically the overlap of one function over the other. It is mathematically represented as the integral of product of one function and the reverse shifted second function. And using these mathematical techniques, we can produce grids like these and more like this one. And here we have such an information loaded grid in the center. Two of the many Nobel laureates from the University of Illinois are superimposed in this lattice. When we place a horizontal line grid onto it, we see Professor Rosalind Yalo, the first American born woman to be awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine. When we rotate the horizontal grid by 90 degrees, we can see Professor Anthony Leggett who won a Nobel Prize in Physics in 2003. You can also create such fascinating information loaded grids with our simple code in Google Collaboratory. All you have to do is run the code snippets, upload two images and see the code work its wonders. Basically, we work with Fourier transforms and convolve images in the Fourier space to generate these grids. The code is commented for better understanding. Hope you have fun creating more patterns of images. And with that, we would like to thank our sponsor, National Science Foundation, for funding our research on this extremely fascinating project of more patterns. And to end this beautiful journey with more, we have added a song from the National Mag Lab to the credits. When graphene sheets have a twist, then you give them a twist that some more. When patterns that were small undergo quantum sprawl at some order. Electrons sip, sippy, sippy, say, on their wavy way, and you'll say you're the Rika. One day you'll achieve atomic states, interleaves, and you'll